Good morning, people of the grid. It's a lovely winter morning. It's cold outside. Hey, I just wanted to share with you something. I wanted to run a test last night. I've got a meeting today that's just outside of the city, and I left the light runner, this electric car, Tesla Model S, parked outside overnight. The temperature was about minus 10 Celsius, so it got nice and cold soaked outside. This morning, uh, I dropped off one of our girls at school, and now I've been driving for about half an hour. Now, before I left the house, I actually ran a warm-up cycle on the car so that it would warm up the car for us. So we could get into a toasty warm car. That process also warms up the battery slightly. That process ran for, was it quite half an hour? I think it was more like, no, it was, it was a full, yeah, it was a full half hour because I did it before I even started getting ready. So, um, heated the car for a half an hour. We got into a car, the cabin was warm. The battery though, wasn't quite warm. Now I'm driving and I've got a little pit stop I'm gonna make at the supercharger because I wanna see how fast of a rate I'll get at supercharging. On a nominal battery where it's not cold at all, I get about 115, 118 kilowatts. If it's still cold when I get there, I won't get near as much until it warms up the battery. And it's interesting because as we do these longer trips in the winter, you know, you think running one cold cycle will warm it up enough. It doesn't. As you can see by those little dashed, uh, dashed lines, that means the battery is still holding back from either accepting full power to regen or providing full power to blast it when you punch it on a takeoff. Um, so yeah, it's not warm and yet the car's been on for close to an hour. So in the winter, that's where, our, that's where our penalty comes from. So ideally, if I was plugged in and the car was charging, just up to the time I was about to leave, charging and heating, then I think I'd be pretty sure that my battery would be warm enough that uh, I wouldn't have as much of a hit. So, interesting. Just about at the supercharger here at uh, Cross Iron Mills. We've been going now half an hour pre-charge, just over half an hour of driving, and I've still got the bottom end, the dashed lines are gone, so it's warm enough to accept full regeneration, but it's still not warm enough to uh, allow full output out of the battery. So you can still drive as fast as you wanna drive, you're just not gonna be able to get there in 2.9 seconds or whatever it is. We'll see, uh, I got another two minutes to the site, so we'll see if it changes. So yeah, you can see that uh, at this temperature, even in with a half hour preheat and about a 30 odd minute, 35 minute drive at high speeds, I mean, that was highway speed, it still hasn't warmed up completely. Um, the other thing I noticed is uh, that you can see on, on grid, that's the uh, trip meter that I use when I drive into the grid. So I kind of reset that each day or for long road trips just to track my mileage. Um, today, so far, this drive has cost me 250 watt hours per kilometer. That's higher than when the battery's warm. And even in winter, in winter when the battery's fully warm, I usually see around two, you know, 230-ish, whatever, like, like it said on uh, since last charge. But for this short leg, 250. So that's where uh, some of your range goes. Uh, some of your range goes to get the battery warm and that's what it's still trying to do. And it's, you just don't get as much energy out. All right, I'm at the supercharger. We're gonna go plug in, take a look at where the battery's at. Still not warm. And let's see what charge rate we get. So there you go. You can see that uh, when I plugged in, it shot up to uh, close to 70 kilowatts of uh, power that it was throwing into the battery. But that's where it stopped and then it actually backed off right now it's sitting at 54 kilowatts the battery on the main dash doesn't show uh, if it's all warm or cold it doesn't show dashed lines because we're not moving but we know based on what's going into the battery that it's still a cold pack 
and right now it's using some of its energy to warm up the pack uh, and then it's also feeding energy into it. It doesn't want to slam full power into it because on a cold battery it'll hurt it. So that's just Tesla's BMS, battery management system, doing its job, doing what it's supposed to do to protect the battery. What it means for us, if you're traveling somewhere, is it means your time to charge up, if you're waiting to get to full here, it's gonna take a lot longer than you thought, or it's gonna take a lot longer than what you're used to in the summer. So there's some things that happen in winter that are a little different. This is one of them. It's gonna take longer to charge because the battery's cold. But that's, uh, that's just the way it is. No big deal. I'm still getting a really good charge rate and uh, I think I'll be here for about 15, uh, no actually I've got an hour. I got I got some training I gotta do. So I'm gonna go do that and we'll see where it ends up. Getting back to the car. I got some work done, got some breakfast done and it's been about an hour. So let's see where we're at. Now because uh, now the battery's almost full so it has to slow down and back off. The dash here still shows that not telling me if the battery is warm or not, but I'm going to unplug and then we'll see what that changes to. All right, so there we go. Charged up the car. It's not quite full, but uh, I got to go to my meeting and I got plenty. Um, the battery is definitely now completely warm, so it turns out that I got here with a battery that wasn't warm, which slowed down my charge, and had I wanted to wait to a full, you know, 100% charge, it, it would have been well over an hour, probably an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half to get there, because it's slower in, uh, in cases where your battery's cold. So there you go. Uh, what, I, what could I have done different? Well. I could have run two heat cycles at home before I left and if I knew that I was coming to a supercharger, which I did, what you can do is basically use a lot of energy very quickly. So you can accelerate and then decelerate uh, using regen. Accelerate, decelerate, accelerate, decelerate. You do that enough times, you will basically force the battery to warm up. Now, I'm not sure how healthy that is for the battery the bms will protect it so it, it it does work but just be aware that if you're going on a longer trip in the winter run at least maybe two heat cycles and then you know do the preheat two heat cycles the preheat and also i would say the third thing you could do is have the car charging at home just before you're about to leave you know charge maybe for an hour prior to leaving plus the heating that should get it as close to being a warm battery as possible and then the driving on top of that will probably bring it just to the point where it's warm so that when you do get to a charger you'll be able to charge quickly and uh oh i don't want to go this way darn 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 so um <laughs> so yeah that way you won't have to wait as long when you do get to a charger to charge that's it guys, hope uh, you enjoyed that. If you do have any questions on the winter stuff, and again, this is just sort of high level. I know people are just getting into some new Model 3s and new Model S's and new Model X's. Um, put them in the comments below. In the description for the video is our uh, link to um, uh, our Tesla referral code. Use that. If, you, if you're uh, liking and getting some info here, we'd appreciate if you use the code. We get, you know, some stuff like free luggage. We get entered in to get to go to the releases that Tesla does. And we've been to a couple of those. They've been a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, we appreciate that. Oh, and we're saving up for a Roadster. So every referral gets us closer to a Roadster. That would be really cool. 